for the scarecrow skulls, we're going to need a skull. Any skull will do. I'm using a milk jug skull from the milk jug skull tutorial. Painted it black with some 99 cent spray paint. Burlap and scissors. A hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. And a container of cold water. Alright, so the basis for this technique is pretty simple. Um, basically, you're going to hot glue burlap over a skull. So using the milk jug skulls, the first thing I have to do is bridge this gap right here. Um, with a foam skull or any other skull, you, you won't need to do that. And basically all you do is you're going to run a bead of hot glue along one edge of the seam. And you're going to very carefully stick your burlap in it. Be careful not to touch the hot glue. Dip your finger in some cold water. Now you can press the hot glue into the burlap. And this will do two things. This will uh, cool the glue down almost instantly. And it also allow you to press the burlap into the glue so that it creates a stronger bond. Let me show you that again on the other side. It really does help if your glue gun works. Once again, you just take, take the glue, run a decent sized bead. Oh, there we go. Like so, carefully place the burlap in it, dip your finger in the cold water, and then press the burlap into the hot glue. There you go, and that's that's a pretty strong bond there. And now, that's the whole technique, really. You just put a dab of glue, and press it, press the burlap into it. You don't necessarily have to put the glue onto the skull. You can, if you like, put the glue onto the burlap itself and what I usually do is I keep it probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch from the edge of the burlap and you'll see why in a minute when we get to putting the other pieces on. You notice that I put this one on upside down. I meant to put the ink side down but this isn't going to matter. You can see I just put kept it about a quarter of an inch ish from the edge and just Press it on with the cold water. And I don't know if you can see it too good on the video, but you can see right here where the hot glue kind of goes over the burlap and it's really kind of integrated into the burlap and that'll hold it right to the skull a lot better. When you cut your burlap, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's definitely not a perfect square. As a matter of fact, this edge right here kind of is perfect, so I'm going to fix that and just cut it right off. Start over here because this is a little, a little more straight. But I also overlap the next piece by probably, I don't know, a quarter of an inch whatever and that'll give me a good seam to work with when we get to that part and just lay it on hold it in place where you want it run your glue and press it down and that's pretty much on there another tip is you don't necessarily have to cover every inch of the skull with glue just you know put some beads of glue on there enough to hold the burlap down And now we've got a pretty good seam right here. There's a couple ways you can go about handling the seams. You could trim this excess off so that this piece matches up with the piece underneath it, or you could just glue this piece down and create the same seam. So for this one, I'll just glue it right down. The same way as before, keeping the glue about eighth of an inch from the edge of the burlap. And I, I usually pull at the edges to kind of fray them up a little bit 
sometimes you'll get these little pieces that stick out. If you pull one out, another cool thing that you can do is just put like a little dab of glue where you want it, put that back in there, and then just glue it down. It's these, these little pieces of burlap dangling, which add to the aesthetics of it. Okay, so when it comes to the face, I try to not put the seams in the eye socket or in the nose cavity or anything like that. When it comes to doing the eyes, eye sockets and the nasal cavities, you want to get enough glue inside the eye and around so that the burlap conforms to that shape. Once you're done wetting your finger and pressing the burlap into the glue, you get a nice little eye socket shape there. I'll try to do this one up close so you, that you guys get to see it a little bit better. Yes, sir. Putting a dab of glue in the eye and then around the eye socket also. Finish it up. Same thing for the nose cavity, too. Okay, so that's pretty much the basis of the technique. Um, you know, I trim some of this right here, and any, anytime I trim a piece off, I like to pull on the ends to fray it. And it creates a really cool looking little seam. All right, so I cut a couple of smaller pieces that I'm gonna use for the mouth. And uh, I usually like to give them a frown or a grimace of some sort. Um, I just don't like them smiling. <laughs> so anyways, it doesn't matter if you start with a top or the bottom of the mouth but what you do is you want to line the edge of your burlap up with where the teeth come together run a bead of glue along the top of the teeth just tack it right into there like that then you just kind of mold it and shape it as you go sticking it as you go along and sticking it down Now, for the bottom part of the jaw, you're going to do pretty much the same thing. You're going to run some glue. Set it where you want it. Make sure you overlap just a little bit so you can get a nice frayed edge here. And then you just kind of... Then just continue on with the uh, cold water and the hot glue. If you have a little extra burlap that hangs down below the chin, all you have to do is just fold it underneath. And once you have it where you want it, you'll see, you'll notice how I have this kind of flap right here that makes the mouth look, look more goofy than scary. So I'm just gonna trim it. If you wanna get really creative, you can take, uh, some sort of teeth that you make doesn't you know and you could stick them in there uh, I haven't done that on any of these yet I may in the future try one with teeth but I think this looks pretty cool on its own the same thing as with the chin when you get to the bottom of the jaw you could just fold it under uh, I'm probably going to trim this piece off 
and use it to fill in this gap that's forming right here. If at some point you do like I did here and I put the glue way over here, now I can't get glue underneath here to get the burlap to conform to the skull. All I have to do is just put the glue over the top of the burlap and press it in the same way. It tends to leave this big glob of glue on the outside, so I try to avoid having to do that. We end up with these goobers that you have to cut off. When it comes to gaps like this, I just cut off small pieces and stick them on there. Um, no rhyme or reason to it. I'm not worried about creating specific seams. Just stick it on there. So what's cool about burlap is that you can really stretch it, bend it, shape it in any way. So if you get a section where it doesn't quite fit, all you have to do is just push it over a little bit. If you want to cut a piece to fit a specific section, just lay it on. What I tend to do is I'll lay it where I want it. And glue one edge down. And then I'll just take the scissors and trim it to fit. And that's it. It's covered. Alright, so that's pretty much it. It's pretty much done. And now we're ready to paint.